Hey, this is Fee, Diamond in the Rough. Welcome to my channel. I um, hope you're ready for uh, this. Is actually, I think I'll make this my last time I do my South African journey. Um, I have got basically our trip to Cape Town, which is a March, then our shark dive, and our day in Cape Town, and then our shark dive. So, um, <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. Just how about I get some colours out to start working with and then we start. And I'll put my glasses on that might help too. So last time I finished off with um, we were in Nisna, we had our dinner. Um, so yeah, we checked out of Nisna in the morning and went towards Cape Town, which was our final destination. Got to find an A here somewhere. Hang on, where's there an A? There's an A. Where's this? Um, <clears throat> so we drove from Nisner to Cape Town. We did make a couple of stops. We did stop at an aloe vera factory and uh, where else did we stop? This The boot, the boot, the boot. What was it called? Um, in Mossel Bay there was, I can't remember what it was called. Um, but there's a postal boot or a boot that you put the post in or something rather like that. Um, took a lot of notice that one, didn't I? But we did the, along the way, we did stop for lunch. Um, but we did, um, but it was not a pretty well uneventful day. You did a little bit of touristy things, but nothing major there. Then we... Um, Got to Cape Town, so it was late afternoon when we got. To, late afternoon? No, mid afternoon we got to Cape Town, and we got. We went once we got into Cape Town. We didn't go to our hotel. We went straight to Table Table Mountain. Sorry. <coughs> so we went straight to Table Mountain. Table Mountain. You end up going in this. Um, up on a rock, up on a cable car type thing, um, but on the inside of it, you pile in the inside of it, and it actually rotates, so it does a complete three hundred and sixty degree rotation um, while on the way up. Um, as we're going up, there were some people that were hiking up to the mountain. It's like, oh my God, um, no, thank you, not for me. But yeah, we were just watching them come up. I don't know whether I got a picture of them or not. I may have. Uh, hang on. Uh, did I get a picture of them? I'll show you some pictures of the museum that we went to because there was a boat on there. Sorry, I'm trying to find to see whether we've got, I've got a picture of the hikers. And if I did, I will put the picture of them here somewhere. You can see me, see it here. No, I think I did, but I think they're, they're too far away. In the, yeah, I can, I've got the pictures, but you can't see them unless you zoom right in. So we've gone up on the uh, cable car all the way up to the top. This is a low beauty thing, thank you. <laughs> For being at Centre Point Tower in Sydney. <laughs> Thank you. 
Here comes the open window. No, <laughs> Oh, don't hold on to it. <laughs> no, I know. Wow. Oh, go track. Oh, there's people walking up. <laughs> Two people walking up. Oh, wow, you're kidding me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're climbing up. Hey, crazy. <laughs> They didn't want to pay the 240 rand. They didn't want to pay the 240 rand. Oh, that's you. That's why you pay one way up, one way down. Yeah. Well, they probably see this as cheating. <laughs> you haven't earned it. Yeah. I don't mind this way. Yeah, me too, definitely. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Oh, and we're staying down there. That's when we... That we're that's we're staying, we're staying down, there. down there. That's crazy. They can't stay. That's where apparently we haven't been down there. Um, they can't stay. Seaport. This is crazy. I think that's safe for anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to inform you that you will pass in the traditional park in part of the world heritage site. So please respect our environment by not picking any flowers, giving off rocks and stones, feeding the wild animals, or wasting water. Please stay on the demarcated pathway. We are there for your own safety. And place your litter in the bins provided. For those who smoke, smoke is only allowed at the top of the hotel, situated below the self-service cafe, as it is a source of litter and major fire hazard if done in any of the pathways. As we are about to talk and come to a complete stop, we would have reached a height of 1,067 meters, approximately 3,500 feet above sea level. <coughs> Your tickets are written tickets. Please do keep them safe at all times. Have you got them? Just to avoid hiking down. We'll be on the right hand side, facing the main building. Thank you very much and enjoy the <laughs> No, I think you're right. <laughs> and I have only short sleeves, the shirt, um, thin tracks, thin activewear pants, and thongs on. And it is absolutely blowing. So I will put some video footage in um, here to show you. what it was like, what the wind was like. Um, so hopefully you enjoy that. Very, very, very windy and it was cold. So in lack of clothing, we found, um, it's called the little post office at the top of the mountain or the little, at the top. We found that place, there was only, there's a shop up there. And we've gone in and 
wander around and while we were looking I came across a fireplace. I went and stood it in front of that and watched Nathan wandering around the shop for a bit. And then I went over and grabbed him and said, oh, come and, come and have a look at this. And I brought him around to where the fireplace was, but it didn't show him. But I made him come around and have a look at something. And he's gone, oh, it's warm. I said, yeah, you stay here and look at whatever it is that's on the shelves here and I'll go and find something. So he was quite happy to stand there by the fireplace while I tried on jackets and did a little bit of shopping there. Um, normally it's not that case, but yeah, it was really good. He's once he got in the fire, got in front of the fire, he was quite happy to stay there for a while because um, he knew that once we left the shop, he'd be back to being cold again. So I brought um, I brought a jumper. I think a few other things, but yeah, um, a pink jumper. Actually, I think I do wear it when I'm recording. Um, it's it's a light jumper. It's nice inside, but it, it was the thickest jumper I could find there. Um, so yeah, uh, we wandered all the way around the top of Table Mountain. Got some interesting pictures. Um, hopefully, I'll show you, be able to show you some nice pictures. there um, hmm. so we then went back down exactly the same way we came up um, in the revolving thing inside of the cable car whatever I don't know what they're actually called um, we got down to the bottom got back to the bus waited for everybody else to get back and then Craig, we started moving off and Craig turned around and he says to us, we are making a detour. We're going to stop for a little while at a shop for you to have a look around in. You'll be able to warm up there. Righty, righty, right. So we have gone into this shop. And so we've gone, gone to the doors and there's a security guard at the door. And we've gone in. He's opened the door up to let us in and we've gone up some stairs and then up we went and it was like, what are we in here? We were actually taken to a jewellers and the amount of diamonds that were there was phenomenal. We were shown a demonstration on how they cut diamonds and the time it takes and the effort that goes into actually cutting a diamond and how much diamond they actually lose when they do the cut is phenomenal. But we watched the process of cutting diamonds. And then it was, we will be here for an hour. Feel free to wander around, make purchase if you wish. And um, yeah, there was some beautiful stuff, beautiful stuff there. Bit out of my price range. Pit, pit, that I did buy something for my daughter-in-law. It's beautiful. Uh, but most of us made some small purchases. However, one person did make a small purchase. Um, which was much to our surprise. It's one lady on the tour. Um, now, if you remember a story before, it's a lady that handed me a coffee cup to hold a coffee cup while she went to the loo, but it was while I was already needing to go. Um, she actually made a significant purchase and brought this stunning, absolutely stunning tennis bracelet. Um, and paid five, I think it was 5,000 US for this bracelet. So yeah, it was, it was beautiful. 
But yeah, that was a surprise to see somebody purchase something like that. Um, yeah, it was really, it was very nice. Um, in the process of being there, though, is uh, Craig's turned around and said to Nathan, because Nathan is, smo is a smoker, or he was at that stage, Nate, um, Craig's turned around and said to Nathan, oh, just head out the back there, go and ask for co go and have a coffee. So Nathan's gone there and um, made a coffee, and I ended up joining him, but made a coffee that he went and got a coffee. And then Craig goes, do you want a cigarette? He goes, yeah, but I don't want to go outside. <laughs> and Craig goes, turns around and person at the coffee machine goes with an ashtray and out comes an ashtray you know so Nathan and Craig are sitting there having a coffee smoking away quite happily chuffing away there in a diamond store just lost what I'm looking for okay so you know it's just it was absolutely brilliant to see brilliant to see um, sit back and have a cigarette in the diamond store. I mean, for us, I don't know about other parts of the country, but most places, smoking indoors is banned. It is illegal. Yet, in this place here, oh, you were able to sit down and have a coffee and a cigarette in amongst all this stuff, which is pretty cool. Okay, so from there we it was pitch black when we left there absolutely pitch black so we went from there to our hotel um, and it was when we got in the bus after um, when we got in the bus after being into the jewelry the diamond store um, Craig turned around and told us what the going rate for tipping guides and drivers. He said, this is the last opportunity you will see us um, in the morning. We're, we're going to drop you off, but we were downstairs in the morning having coffee. I will be downstairs at the hotel having a coffee in the morning if you want to catch up with me. Um, but this is the going rate for drivers um, and so this is when you hop off the bus it will be the last opportunity for you to say goodbye to Moses which is basically him saying if you're going to give him if the tip that you give him this is the this is the last time you get the opportunity to give him a tip um, and this is how much you should pay him tips so standardly so much per day for drivers so, um, yep, out come the work wallets, purses, put the cash together. Us being Australians, we, I've said it before, we're not used to tipping. So we were completely, we are kind of caught unaware with it um, in that manner. And it was actually South Africa that taught me a bit more about tipping and understanding tipping. Um, so we've basically rated whatever cash we've got on us. Um, to actually give Moses a really good tip because he was he was brilliant. Um, but yeah, so we went from there. We got dropped. We gave Moses tip, and then we were dropped off. Uh, uh, we did organise, however, to have a last supper with the group. Um, we were scheduled to go shark diving the next day. Um, and, and so therefore the rest of the group had tours they were going to do um, together we already had something booked so we weren't going to do that so la that night was our last night to spend with them so we went and had dinner with them and uh, as a group or well it wasn't a full group there were um Two couples that didn't come, didn't come to the dinner. Um, however, it was only at dinner that I realised that nobody else was going to miss them. 
um, <laughs> which is not a nice thing to say, but they were very pushy, very pushy and very vocal and, um, yeah, I'll just leave that there, nationality aside, but yeah, they were they were just they were rude, up and out rude, which everybody struggled with the rudeness of them. And I will say that rudeness was to us it was they were rude. To other some others it was like, well they were just a pain in the ass, but but others it just depended on your nationality, on the way that this one woman came across for us was absolutely rude whereas somebody else turned around and said well no that's what they're like so yeah uh, that was quite interesting but they didn't they weren't that two the two couples were actually brother and sister and their husband and wives um so it wasn't too bad you know but the rest of us we got to and we had this dinner we all sat down and, and had a good old chat to say goodbye and chatted over some of the stuff that we'd seen and where people were going to next. You know, although while we were doing the tour, you know, we spent individual times with time with other people, but never in a full group. So we got to hear even more. Um, there was... You know, like one of the guys was saying he's he was staying in Cape Town, Cape Town for an extra couple of days. A couple of the others were heading to Victoria Falls for a couple of days. Um, just all the different things that they had planned on doing. Um, so yeah, it was really cool, really cool. Um, we swapped email addresses, and I think I emailed them a couple of times because I had. Um, traveler photos it's out of whack so which is so I took photos of mainly places and avoided taking photos of pictures of my fellow travelers um, because I had the the not YouTube but I had my um, website uh, they knew I had their website because that that actually sent the website to their families so that their families could have an idea of what was going on um, but I avoided taking pictures where they were in these anybody in the tour was in because I didn't have their authority to put their pictures up anywhere um, you will see that if you look at uh, any of the any of my um, any of the pictures on my on my actual web page the only pictures where you will see somebody from the tour group is I've taken a picture and I've gone, am I allowed to take, can I use this? You know, there's a one, one with uh, one of the guys patting the cheetah and it was the first time I'd actually asked for someone to be in on the page, on my web page, on my website and I said straight in front of the am I okay to use this picture and put it on the web page? And he was like, heck yeah, my family's going to see this. They're going to see me patting this cheetah. <laughs> so um, the, when you see people, it is on the this on the web pages. I do actually have their, I don't have written authority, but I have their verbal authority at the time of taking the pictures. Because um, I do have photos of them that are actually that I don't show because they are I don't have I didn't ask their permission um, but yeah so on now on my um, video you on my web page you will actually see the group of us as travelers all together at a table um, and that was us having last last our last supper together So that was an enjoyable night of reminiscing and where to from there. Um, headed back to our room. Um, now, headed back to our room. We were supposed to be going on the cage shark cage dive the following day, 
uh, due to bad weather, we'd been notified the morning before that the, that the dive wasn't going to happen. So, um, you know, it, all of this was booked and paid for ages ago. And the guys were really great. The guys were really great. You know, they're saying, well, I turned around and said, well, the, I, the, what to say, this is our only free day and next day we are actually flying back home. So they have like going, well, what time's your flight? And I've got given the details and they said, well, what we can do is we'll book you on that day and we will get you to the airport on time. If not, we will, um, if they weren't able to get us to the airport in time or we missed our flight, they were going to take responsibility for it. Um, so which is really good. You don't get that service very often. So, um, you know, we were expected to go on the shark dive on this day, but it didn't happen. So, if that's our, so our free day in Cape Town, which should have been our shark diving day, um, we had a very leisurely day. Uh, I mean, in the morning we caught up with Craig and tipped him and thanked him. He was, he was pretty good, pretty good to the guy. Um, uh, yeah, thank Tip Tim and thank Tim, and then um, we got on one of the red hop on hop off buses for a tour around Cape Town, uh, and we ended up at where did we end up at? Oh, where was it? Some went to a bird and monkey display. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll try and put some pictures in of the birds and the monkeys um, that we saw. Um, now, it was a miserable day. This is why we had our, our shark dive was cancelled on us. Um, it was miserable and it was raining and all the birds that we saw were just about all drenched or they were in places where they were sheltered as best they could and they were looking pretty interesting. Um, so yeah, there's, oh, there's a few different pictures that I'll show here. We've got some vultures. Um, so the only vultures we saw were actually at this place. So unfortunately, you know, the only ones we saw were in cages. Um, the, <laughs> the at the end, towards the end of it, we there were these little monkeys, and uh, you see a picture of me with of me with these monkeys all over me. Now that jumper that I was wearing in that picture was brand new. I bought that's the pink jumper I bought the night day before at. Um, at um, Table Mountain um, so it was a real pretty pink and then I've ended up with these monkeys all over me um, and to the degree where one of them actually peed down my top so I um, I was done but it was like it's really cool to have these monkeys climb all over you. Really cool. Um, yeah. Um, and you'll see a picture. I'll show you the picture now. And what you've got is fingers. That is actually... Oh, shit. Oh, no. That's a mess to be cleaned up. <laughs> oh bugger. Okay, that's clever. Three oh three one eight three eight. I just put my D's and my E's together and they are 
so close to the same colour that it's ridiculous. Hang on. You can't even, I can't even see the difference between the two colours. Sorry guys, I'll get on with the story shortly. 3 -0. What have we got? 838 is beige brown, very dark. 3031 mocha brown. They are so close together in colour. No, well, I just found another one I needed to do there. D and E are now the same. I don't think it'll make much of a difference towards the end, but I am going to have to try and sort those two out. Far out. Okay. Kick myself now for a quite a while. So yeah, I think I was saying there's a picture there where you've got fingers showing over the uh, camera. That's a monkey that actually climbed up Nathan's pants and up over him. And that's actually this little monkey's fingers on there that you can see. Now, apparently these guys have a very keen, very keen sense of smell. Um, Nathan had some lollies in his pocket and so this monkey had actually gone to his pocket um, but Nathan had forgotten they were in his pocket and it wasn't until the woman said you've got something in your pocket that that monkey wants um, and he's gone looking and put his hand in his pockets and then discovered that yeah he had some lollies in there and um, he had to basically put them further in his pocket and keep try and keep the monkey from getting into his pants. You know, that's really funny. That's really wrong. But he had to stop the monkey from um, getting what it wanted, I suppose, is the best way to put it. Okay. So after that, we took, we continued on our little hop-on, hop-off tour um, with the sole objective of I need to go home. I need to back, go back to my room, have a shower, clean clothes on because I am I stink and I am very uncomfortable. So we've done finished the tour around on the bus because it stops near where we we staying. Um, drove through Shanty Town. The amount of satellite dishes on top of those places was phenomenal. Um, we found out more about that when we did our shark dive, but I'll touch on that then because that's a conversation that we had with um, with the guy that drove us. Okay, so we've gotten back to the um, hotel. We've sh I've showered, changed clothes, put the clothes I was wearing in a bag and uh, sealed that bag up because... With Australian quarantine laws, um, if you take soiled clothing in, they need to be um, basically need to be fumigated um, just in case. You know, we, we were in amongst animals um, and they need to be fumigated so that we don't bring any disease in. And the bonus is that I'm fully aware that. Quarantine is very, very strict in Australia. Um, so, but yeah, so I bagged it up and then had the shower and we've toddled back out, gone out again. We went to the waterfront, the harbour there. 
and wandered around. Um, we bought a little bit, not much. Came across husband, husband daycare. And I will put that picture here. Uh, Cape Down's oldest husband daycare centre. Need time to yourself, need time to relax, want to go shopping. Leave your husband with us, we'll take care of him for you. You only pay for his food and drinks. Um, it's not the first time I've seen that sign, but it was really appropriate. But Nathan's like, yeah, no, I don't want to stay in the pub. So it's like, okay. So we uh, roamed around and did a little bit of shopping. Brought some gadgets for home. I brought, I think it was there that I brought stuff for the guys that I work with, the people that I work with. I brought them some um, key rings and that, which is something you tend to do when you go away. Um, tend to go away, you come back with little trinkets of some sort for people that you work with. Um, yeah, so we wandered around there. Um, and because we were going to get up, we were, we were going to get, we were expecting, we'd made our wake up call for three o'clock because we were getting picked up a quarter to four in the morning, I think it was. So we went back to the hotel and then um, we went for a walk up the street and found a pizza place and we bought pizza, took it back to our room and we had pizza and went to bed early. Um, and yeah. Our uh, alarm went off and woke us up and we packed our bags and went downstairs. <clears throat> and we had, we were picked up by this gentleman named, well he, he, we, he, said, he said his name and then he turned around and said Sebs, just to call him Sebs, or Sibello. Um, and he was really, really cool, really cool. Um, no, he was picked. We picked up a quarter past four. There we go. Um, it's funny the bits and pieces we do and don't remember. Uh, so yeah, he picked us up and took us to Hans Bay, where the shark dog is which wasn't a short drive, it was a fair distance we travelled. Um, Nathan sat in the front with him having a good old yak. Um, we were talking about different things and this is where we talked about um, what we, when we went, did the bus tour the, and saw the shanties. And you know, Nathan said, oh, there's so many satellite dishes. And Seb turned around and said, well, that's because we come to the city to work and we earn our money and we per buy stuff. And then when we go home, we take all that with us. Um, but if you walk into one of those shanties, the outside does not represent the inside. He says, you'll find your 55-inch TVs in there. You'll find your massive fridges, right? Around. He said, but as soon as we go home, we take it with us to our family and then we come back again and then we do it all over again. The city is where we work to get money and stuff for our family back home. The city, the Cape Town is not our home. It is just where we earn our money. This is just where we work. So, yeah, um, he was really cool, really informative. Um, because we'd had um, Craig, which he was a, a white South African, Sebs was obviously a black South African. So we had, um, we learned a lot more from him about way of life. I mean, the difference, uh, a difference of how they treat, how people are treated on their skin. Um, yeah, it's just very, very, very different. Um, but yeah, he was absolutely brilliant guy. We've gotten, we got the Hans by just before the sun came up, but we came across, we got to a service station. Nathan knew the loo, 
And so we stopped. And Sebs has gone, oh, you can get coffee and such and such in there. And so we've gone in and got a coffee. And because um, he waited at the car while we went, went and did what we had to. And I've come back, I've had a mouthful of coffee. And I basically swallowed the coffee and tipped the coffee out. Uh, and Seb's gone, what's wrong? I said, it tastes like shit. <laughs> and Seb's gone, oh, rubbish, you know. <laughs> and then he's gone in and got, so he, while we're in the, waiting at the car for him, he's gone, gotten himself a coffee and he's come back out and he's had a mouthful of coffee and he's gone, he's tipped it out and gone, you're right, it does taste like shit. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he was cool. He was really good. So yeah, he took us to uh, where we we went to the paddy dive shop or something like that, and and where we met the crew that was taking us for our dive. Now Nathan wants a white. Pointer tooth. Oh gosh, I don't have many of them left. Um, so the guy was actually showing him their white pointer tooth. Now, white pointers are classified as an endangered species, although they shouldn't be anymore. So actually being able to get a tooth, um, you can't you're not to have it to have been able to get a white pointer tooth has to be from a obviously a dead white pointer or one that is bitten into something like a surfboard and left the tooth behind. Um, you are not allowed to kill white pointers. Um, so Nathan's in there looking at all these white pointer teeth, trying to convince the guys. To sell him one and they're like not prepared to sell him um, they met what we did have was he managed to get a fossilized tooth and um, sorry just looking for more ends managed to get a fossilized tooth um, he purchased but we got him a picture with holding a white pointer tooth so he was okay with that. He lived with that. He, he was like, that was what he's left with. No other option. Right, I'm doing the O's, but I know there's Q's in there. Just making sure not get the Q's as well. Okay. So we've gone out to the boat and taken out on the boat. And um, I'll go through the story of getting onto the shark guard because it wasn't part of our tour. Um, I managed to, I, we all, I organised for this shark dive outside of this tour that we did, which is actually quite easy to organise. Um, but what happened is when we were told, when Nathan was told by his sister um, about the trip, um, I turned around and right back then turned around and said, I want to go shark diving. They do shark diving then with the white pointers. And Nathan, so that was back in February, March. And Nathan was, nope, not doing it, not doing it, not doing it. Uh, between myself and his best mate, um, working on him, um, it, it, it was, I was not getting very far. He worked at a store, a fishing store. He managed a fishing store at the time. And he actually asked some of the um, South African guys that go in there for their fishing gear, asking them about the shark diving and how safe is it, because that's the biggest thing, you know. You don't go shark dive. You don't get in their territory. Um, so the guys actually... A lot of the guys turned around and said, you've got to do it, you've got to do it. You get the opportunity to do it, you'll love it. And he still wasn't too sure about it. About June, 
he actually came home and he said, I've been talking to such and such and he's really raving about it. So we'll do it. Um, I went, okay. Um, so I got onto the website that I'd been looking at and went and booked it and paid the deposit. Actually, I paid, I paid for the whole for a lot. Paid for the whole thing. And that later on that evening, I said, I hope you're still sure about doing the um, shark dive. And he goes, why? And I said, because it's booked and fully paid for, so if you're not going, it's a waste of money. <laughs> he was not impressed. But I didn't, um, it didn't give him any chance to back down at all. He said he was going to do it, so I purchased it, got it booked and done. But it took so long to convince him to do it. So then, now back to the, the actual day, we've gotten onto the boat. And I'd done so much to convince Nathan to do this shark dive. And I so wanted to do it. I forgot one major, major issue is how seasick I get on the smaller boats. I get seasick on normal boats, but the smaller boats I get really bad. I won't even go out fishing with him. He's invited me out fishing on a boat in Perth, and I've gone, no, nah, not getting on a boat. Um, I forgot how bad I get, how badly seasick I get. So, I, um... On the way out there, I started getting queasy, and it was like, oh, heck. But we got out to the point, they lowered the cages into the water, we got on wet gear, it got into wet suits and weight belts and all that. Um, actually, Nathan didn't get his weight belt on. He went straight into the cage as quickly as he could. Didn't realise he needed a weight belt on. Um, but yeah, but he was just so eager to get in there and see these. He he, he was so excited to do it, um, and I knew he would have loved. He was going to love it. But I've gotten into the water, into the cage with the first group, um, and the water was so murky you could hardly see anything, but you could see them. Um, Nathan actually had one come right up to his face, right up to his face. He was so excited when he came out of the water. But basically, when we came out, that was me done. I couldn't go back in the water. On the boat we had on one side of the boat was actually the cage was actually strapped to the boat. The other side, there wasn't anything. Um, on this side, there was three others that were seasick. <laughs> Um, and those three others had already started feeding the fish, let's put it that way. My stomach was just not happy. I hadn't started feeding the fish. Um, but what you'll see is, <clears throat> I think I've got some video footage there that I'll show you where I'm actually looking over the edge of the boat. So I actually have sunglasses that have a video camera built into them, which is why some of the footage you might see a hair going over the, the glasses. Um, but yeah, the um, <clears throat> looking, yeah, looking over the oh, where I'm looking over the side of the boat, and we're actually seeing the sharks swimming underneath, and I'm being able to call out saying, "There's another one coming." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, we're on the corner. Got what do you there. think? Woo! It was wicked down there. Yeah. It's coming back. Another one here. Um, so yeah, I spent the rest of that morning, met rest of the time on the boat, basically on that side of the boat with my head over the side. Um, not doing too well. Not doing too well. 
Uh, so yeah, we've gone and done the shark drive and when coming back in, you know, Nathan was so revved up and excited. It was brilliant. Um, he was really glad he was done he'd done it. You know, I think even that surprised him even more was how much he enjoyed it. Um, which is cool. Which is really cool. So we've gone back to the dive shop. Had showers and they had hot soup and coffee and all of that for us to warm back up with. And um, it was time to go. And Seb's took us back. Um, don't know which direction Seb's took us back. I know Nathan was yakking to him. We were both sitting in the back seat, both yakking away to him. And I've gone to sleep. And then I've woken up to discover that Nathan was sound asleep. <clears throat> Basically, we we had it wasn't when I woke up I realised how bad a situation that could have been. If if we could have ended up in a situation where with both of us having fallen asleep, he could have done anything. We could have had anything done to us. We could have had anything, all of our gear stolen, whatever. But we had fallen asleep. Um, and I don't know whether Nathan realised what had happened either at that point. Um, yeah, we had a, it was a gorgeous, really nice drive round. Um, Nathan taught Sebs a new saying, because uh, Nathan's like waking up and he's gone, Sebs, we need to find somewhere to stop, I need the toilet. <laughs> and he, no, he didn't say that. He said, Sebs, we need to stop. My back teeth are floating. He says, what do you mean your back teeth are floating? He said, I need to wee. My, I've got so much liquid in there, my back teeth are floating. So Sebs has lost the plot. We love the saying. They've stopped somewhere for the toilet and whatever. And Sebs kept asking Nathan if there's any other sayings. I mean, you don't know what other sayings you've got that they don't, that others don't know. But Seb's reckoned he was going to he was going to use that one. He thought it was brilliant. So yeah, shark dive that was done. And then so Seb's took us to the airport. We didn't miss our flight, which was good. Um, I had managed to purchase an upgrade on our flight. Um, so we went from just standard flight to we actually went. Um, first class so we went into the first class lounge and relaxed there nice and comfortably like I use the I use the lounges all the time the Qantas lounge all the time where the food is free there's comfortable seats there's showers there's toilets and there's a lot less people um, so we went in you know with the upgrade we got all of that so we were able to have showers again because we were basically flying from Cape Town to why can't I just think of it? Johannesburg. We're going from Cape Town to Johannesburg, then Johannesburg to home. So we yep, we chilled, we ate, we had showers and just relaxed before getting on the flight. And then Nathan, um, when we got to boarding, Nathan had his first, first time he sat first class ever because he could not believe the size of the chairs and being able to put the feet up. Um, and, yeah, I mean, when you fly standard and then you get to flying business and first class, you really do notice the difference. Um, so yeah, I've I've done it a couple of times through work, um, and I've actually already I've had flight upgrades previously, so I already knew what to expect. But yeah, Nathan was just couldn't believe the difference in space. Where was that? I had an A somewhere. There it is. Couldn't believe the difference in space. Yeah. 
But up go the leg rests, up lays he back, lays back and yep, chillaxes for the trip. It was a quite enjoyable trip to go back to Johannesburg. And then get off the plane at Johannesburg and we've got to go meet our next flight. We've gone through the shop, through security, all of that. And um, Nathan's like, oh, I've got to get water, I've got to drink. I said, well, you're not going to be able to take it on the plane. He says, yes, I have. I've brought it in the airport. I'll be able to take it in the plane. I'm like, going, no, you won't. He goes, oh, well, I'm going to go get some. So, okay, so we sat there and waited before boarding. So he went off and got water. And then while he was off getting water, they did the security call for boarding. So with Australia, you will wait at one set of gates and then you do the security call, which is where you go through another lot of gates or to go through those gates. You actually have your bag searched for any liquids and other stuff. Um, anything over a certain amount, you're not allowed to carry on the plane. If you buy duty-free in the airport, that's all got to go through and be declared and then it's sealed up and it's not carried on the plane by you it is um, whatever they have to do with it but any flights into Australia you're not allowed to carry a certain amount of anywhere up to anywhere above a certain amount of liquid um, but yeah we've got the security call up and Nathan's still off buying his water when he comes back and he's looking at everybody lined up and he's going why are they lining up I said well we've got our next security check and you're not going to be able to take your water through. And he's like, yes, I will. And I was like, no, you won't. So I went, well, you stay here, drink one bottle, and then try and get security, get through security with the second. And I'll meet you at the other end of security because I'm not going to be here while you argue the point that you brought it there. So I basically met, left Nathan at the security gates drinking his water. Um, and left, I left him so that he went through security alone because I just couldn't deal with him. He, it's one of the reasons why I don't travel with him and why I don't like to travel with him is when you go through certain points and he jacks up and he's, he's cranky, it's like, well, you're not going to delay me. <laughs> if you ever see anywhere at an airport where one person makes a hoo-ha kick-up stink, Everybody else they're travelling with gets involved in it. And um, I'm not missing a flight for nobody. I don't care. You, you can carry on. You, I can give you the warning again if you're going to carry on. This is what you're going to be facing. If you're going to carry on, you're going to miss the flight. Um, and therefore, that's my warning of, well, I warned you, I'm not missing the flight because of you because I've already given you the heads up. But, yeah, so... Um, I got through security, declared the small amount of liquid that I had, based basically a um, small amount of hand wash stuff, which was okay. Um, and I've gone through security and I've stood there and watched him have his discussion with the security guard. Security guy is saying, I brought this in the airport. I didn't bring it into the airport. I brought it in the airport. Um, and it was just, I'm just there going, just, just leave it behind, just leave it behind. In the end, he did. He realised that it wasn't going in. But he was so pissed off. He just couldn't understand the fact that the security side of things is not to be an inconvenience. It is there for a reason. You know, if it is there for a very good reason. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, um, he, got, he got through security and he was still bitching about having to give up his water. And then, because cause he drinks a lot of water. He does, he's a big, he drinks a lot of water. Um, but we get onto the plane. And as, basically, as soon as his backside touched the seat and there was an air hostess within hearing, he was like, I need water, bring me water now. I have to give my water up, you need to bring me water now. 
which they did, they understand. So yeah, um, that was basically our, our trip. It was a good trip. Um, would I do it again? I'd like, I want to go back, but I don't want to do that trip again. There's other stuff, but that trip gave me uh, more of a desire to go to other places within Africa to see things. Um, there is one that I want to do, but Nathan says it's too long. He couldn't do it for that long. Um, so I'm going to put that one on my bucket list and go, well, I'm, your decision, you don't want to do it that long, but I'm going to go. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully you have enjoyed these stories as I've travelled along and shown you. Um, I've actually enjoyed reliving the experience and telling you about it. Um, sorry, I'm trying to look for letters, but I can't see any. I'm trying to finish talking to you guys. So what I'll do, I'll leave it there. Um, let me know. How you feel? I'm, I'm looking at, there was one other trip that I've done. Well, I've done other trips. But I am thinking about doing the trip with in relation to my cruise um, from Copenhagen up Norway um, and Iceland and back. So I'm looking at doing a um, whip and chat on those travels as well. Um, but, yeah, so hopefully you liked it. Please hit the like, leave a comment. Um, subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be notified of the next time I upload anything. And um, yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye. I know I did just say bye, but I thought I would show you how this is going. Okay, just turn the light off. So I've still got a little bit to do, but there he is. And this was a picture taken by Nathan. She is, not he. Um, and, yeah, this was the one that was won by, this was a custom that I won by my diamond painting, 40 by 50. And, um, I'll probably see, we will, I will probably see another one of these done by somebody else who um, is getting this picture. And uh, thank you for watching. Bye.